Here are some uh, basic examples with rook polynomials. So here we've got uh, a 3 by 3 board with just one square blocked off. And uh, we're going to try and place some rooks on this uh, in such a way that, that they can't attack each other, which means that uh, you can't have two rooks in the same row and you can't have two rooks in the same column. And so remember, we, we talk about this in terms of the rook polynomial. The coefficient of x to the k in the rook polynomial is the number of ways of placing k rooks so that they don't attack each other. So, uh, <clears throat> so if we look here, uh, if we can put a, uh, well, we want to place one rook, you know, we could place it in any one of these squares. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different squares, and we could place one rook in any one of them. Uh, so the coefficient of x, x to the one, that's the number of ways of placing one rook, uh, and uh, so you, there's one for each square, so you get an eight x. Uh, there's no issue really about uh, rooks attacking each other in this case because you've only got one rook it can't attack itself and uh, uh, so the coefficient of x is always just the number of white squares in your board uh, and the constant term is always just equal to one because there's only one way of placing no rooks uh, what about placing two rooks okay so uh, we've actually listed over here 14 different ways okay you can place two rooks like this or like this or like this or like this those are four possibilities where you've got a rook at a1 and then a, a one rook somewhere else uh, or we can place a rook at a2 and then uh, it's, uh, two three that's three possibilities for where you place the other rook if uh, uh, you know, four actually four possibilities for where you place the other rook if you've got one at a2 and then uh, here we could place our first rook at b1 uh, and then uh, we could have one at c2 or c3 or our first rook at b2 and then the next one at either c1 or c3 or we could place our uh, first rook at uh, b3 and then either the next one at either c1 or c2. So we see here there's uh, 14 ways to do it. Right? Uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so if we place, uh, yeah, place a rook here, say, then uh, yeah, we've got uh, these three squares are still empty. We can put a rook there or we can put a rook there. Okay. But anyway, so we, so we found there's 14 different ways to place two rooks, and so the coefficient of x squared is going to be 14. Now, how about if we try and place uh, three rooks? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, how many ways are there to do that? So, we, if we're going to have three rooks, there has to be one rook in each row. Okay. Because you're not allowed to have more than one rook in each row, because otherwise they'd attack each other. So, you have to have a rook in each row. Uh, and uh, similarly, you have to have a rook in each column. Okay. So, the rook in the top row could go here uh, or, or here. Okay. Then, uh, <clears throat> so uh, there's two choices for that. Um, but then when, when you place your first rook, you always uh, always blocked off one of the possibilities for row B. Um, and so you've got two different possibilities left for row B. Okay. Um, and then once you place the rook in row A and rook in row B, then there's always just going to be one, uh, one possible white square left over in row C. And so you don't get any choice about that. Okay, so basically you've got two choices for the first one, either there or there. And then once you've chosen the first one, you get two choices for the second one. So altogether, four different choices for how you can place three rooks. Okay. Um, so uh, the four possibilities are listed here, uh, like that, or like that, or like that, or like that. So we've got a coefficient of four for x cubed. And of course, there's no way you can place more than three rooks, so we don't have any terms beyond the x cubed term. Okay, so that's the, that's the answer for this uh, three by three board uh, with the top right blocked off. <coughs> So now let's do another example. Here we've just got a completely blank 3x3 three three board. All right. uh, so we're going to uh, have a general theorem about completely blank boards later, but uh, we'll just sort of illustrate that in this case. So here, um, <coughs> well, as always, the constant term is always 1, because there's one way of placing no rooks. Uh, the coefficient of x is just always equal to the number of white squares, which is 9 in this case. Um, <coughs> Okay, then how about uh, how about the coefficient of x squared? Okay, so here, um, so you want to place two rooks. They have to go in two different rows uh, and leaving one row blank. So there's three ways to choose which way which row we're going to leave blank. And then uh, they have to go in two different columns, uh, leaving one column blank. So there's three ways to uh, choose which column is going to be blank. Okay, so may, uh, <coughs> so we could place uh, place them like here, say. So uh, uh, you've got the the, the first row is blank and the middle column is blank okay um, but uh, you know, if we still you know if we can uh, keep the same blank row and column but just switch the rooks around like so uh, so we still got the first row blank 
and the middle column blank, but uh, we've just uh, swapped the rooks over. So that's an extra kind of factor of two. Uh, so we find that there's uh, three, cho uh, three choices of the blank row, three choices of the blank column, and then once we've done those, we still get two choices for exactly where the rooks go, so that's, that's 18 overall. So 18 possible uh, possibilities uh, for placing two rooks, and if we want, we can just click through here uh, to see all of those possibilities. <coughs> Uh, then what about the problem of placing three rooks? So again, we have to place uh, uh, place, place one rook in the first row. Um, so there's three choices for that. And then a one rook in the second row. Uh, now one of those possibilities has been blocked off, so we've got uh, two choices for where, what we do in the second row. And then in the third row, uh, there's only going to be one white square left, uh, so we don't have any choice there at all. So it's just three times two, which is six possibilities for placing three rooks, uh, corresponding to the six here. Um, and again, we can click through these to see all the possibilities if we want. Okay, so that's this here is the rook polynomial for a three by three blank board. <coughs> so here's a more complicated example, uh, a four by four board. Um, okay, so we've got uh, six white squares, so the coefficient of x is going to be six. Um, then uh, <coughs> Uh, and then what about placing uh, placing two rooks? Okay, so uh, um, <clears throat> so one thing to notice is that there's this kind of group of four squares here, which is just kind of uh, doesn't really interact with this group of two squares here. Um, so uh, if you want to place uh, you want to place two rooks, well you could put either you could put them both in this square here. In which case you either do that or you do that. Okay, that's two possibilities. Or you could place them both in this pair of squares. In which case you have to do that and that. Um, <clears throat> so that's one more possibility. Um, or you could place one in this block and one in this block. So here you get four choices for the one here and two choices for the one there, which is uh, so that's eight overall. Okay, so that's, um, <clears throat> so yeah, for th three different versions we had uh, two and one and eight. Uh, so that's eleven possibilities for the uh, for placing two rooks all together. Again, we can uh, yeah. um, so. Uh, There's a <coughs> uh, there's one with uh, there's one with two rooks here and uh, the other one with two rooks here uh, and then uh, uh, this is the one where we've got two rooks in in this pair and then uh, all, all the others uh, the other eight uh, where you've got one rook in this block and one rook in this block so that's uh, eleven possibilities altogether then if we want to place three rooks uh, <coughs> okay then uh, again either you place two in here and one in there, um, in which case so you get uh, two choices for the pair in here and two choices of the pair there, that's uh, for the one there. Uh, so that's uh, four, four choices. Uh, or you can have two here and then one here and then there's four ways to do that. Okay, so overall that's uh, eight possibilities for placing, uh, uh, placing three rooks. Um, those are listed across here, giving this uh, coefficient of eight here. And then, uh, if you want four rooks, well, then you have to have have to have a rook in the top row. So that has to go here. Have to have a rook in the bottom row. That has to go here. And then you get two choices for where the remaining two rooks go. Uh, so we so we get this rook polynomial for this board. Finally, uh, <coughs> we can uh, consider <coughs> uh, this one here. Uh, it's a four by four board. Um, okay, and. Uh, Again, uh, for this one, I think there's no uh, <coughs> uh, there's no real real tricks involved in doing this. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see various general methods for calculating root polynomials later, but at this stage, we don't know those. The only way we can really approach this is just by uh, going through and enumerating all the possibilities. Uh, I mean, as always, we've got a constant term of one. Uh, the, term, the coefficient of x is the number of white squares: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, <clears throat> and if you want two rooks, well, yeah, we just have to go through systematically. Okay, we put one here at AA, then you get uh, uh, one choice, two, three, four, five possibilities starting uh, for a, one, two, three, four, five possibilities uh, with an AA. Uh, then instead of putting a rook here, we could put one here, and then you can... Uh, list the various possibilities with the first rook being at AD, you can go like that, or like that, or like that, or like that, 
all like that and so on uh, and we find there's 19 possibilities um, uh, for two rooks 14 possibilities for three rooks and if we want four rooks well uh, okay, so actually for four rooks well, yeah, we can be a little bit more systematic um, so we can say uh, we have to have a rook in each row so we have to have a rook in this row and there's only one possibility for that here uh, <coughs> okay um, <coughs> yeah and uh, then uh, then we've got two choices for a rook in the first row but then if we put one uh, at AA then we're forced to put one here and then we're forced to put one here um, and if instead we put one here then we're forced to put one here and then we're forced to put one there so we find there's two ways of placing four rooks uh, giving a 2x to the fourth.